Rotherham United in June 2011, and this is really when you started stamping your mark within the Football League. How did that move come about to Rotherham? Um, I, the manager at the time, Andy Scott, I'd played with his brother, uh, Rob Scott, uh, Rob uh, Ilkerson, sorry, he was a manager uh, with Paul Hurst at the time, they took over. Um, so that was kind of the link there. He'd obviously told his brother just to, you know, to sign me. Um, and yeah, the first season didn't didn't go great. I didn't. I only made a, one or two appearances, and then I wasn't in the squad from probably the start of the season till about January. Um, so yeah, that was that was pretty frustrating. But then after that, it was, you know, yeah, like I say, the, the whole back to back promotions, playing <laughs> nearly every game was, um, yeah, it was was the making of my career really. Yeah, what were your thoughts at the time that first season at Rotherham? You know, when you were in the squad sometimes, and then you're out of it for a period. What was that like to deal with? Yeah, I mean, it was it was frustrating. There was there's there's only so many times I could go in and ask, you know, kind of what what I needed to do. They were kind of around the playoffs at the time, so he, he didn't really need to play me. Um, but yeah, I mean, there was a period where I was with a fitness coach for probably about six weeks, going in on my days off you know, training, doing extra uh, fitness work, getting told to train away from the group. Um, wow. Yeah, it was, it was brutal, to be fair. And, um, yeah, the, I think it was the week I'd, I'd agreed a um, a pay-up from the club. Um, so, yeah, I was literally going in to sign that, and he, he called me into my office and said, uh, yeah, no, I want you to <laughs> I want you to start playing now. Um what do, you, as I was going. what do you think that what what where do you think that come from that complete change of mind I, honestly i don't know so wow because obviously the six months before that i was sat there doing nothing just available to yeah. play uh we'd agreed a package you know to you know to get paid up and and me to move on the club to move on so yeah i mean when he, he called me in i was going in with my pen to sign the contract and then they yeah he just completely u-turned and said that <clears throat> yeah he needed me to play and that he was he was going to involve me again wow yeah exactly well that following season was the special one and your promotion under steve evans first and foremost you know going into the pre-season of that year did you believe you had the minerals to to go and get promoted yeah i mean the obviously when steve came in that that changed a lot for me from day one he kind of just said you know you'll be playing as long as you you, you, do, you train well, which I did. Um, so I knew I had the backing of the manager really then. Um, and he made some good signings. We, we, we were kind of not expected to get promoted, but we were certainly, you know, expected to be up there, especially what he did with Crawley and stuff the week before, uh, the year before. So, um, yeah, we had a good squad that year. So, yeah, it was we were up there and obviously we got promoted, which was good. Yeah, because, yeah, like you just said, Ben, you, you did get promoted. Was there, now you look at back at that campaign, it, was there ever one moment that you look back at it and you think, that's when we did it? Um, I think, well, the, the last five games, um, we were, I think we were third or fourth, something like that. Um, and we knew that if we kind of won all five games, that would that would get us up. Um I think there was a game against Bradford where we we won two nil, but we were one nil up with about two minutes to go, and their goalkeeper came up for the corner. And we broke in the last minute, and Kieran Agard ran the length of the pitch basically and put it into an empty net. So <laughs> we knew after that we just needed to beat. I think it was Plymouth away, and then all the shot at home. Um, so yeah, that that was probably the moment that we we knew we were going to do it. Yeah, let's talk about Steve Evans for a sec. You know, how would you describe him in terms of what do you think was was the key to him unlocking the success of the club at the time, whether that be his tactics, his, his man management? What do you think? Um, I mean, at the time, he'd obviously come from Crawley where he was renowned for getting in people's faces, shouting, swearing. He was quite aggressive on the touchline and, and with people. Um, and it was very unique style of management. You know, some players could deal with it, some players couldn't. Um, he obviously had a, his core group of players that it worked really well with um, and he could trust. Um, but to be fair to him, he did, like I say, he brought in a good squad. So, um, yeah, I think, like you say, he, he, different players react different to him. So, um, but 
you know, we, we, we still managed to do well that season and, and obviously get promoted. Yeah, you signed a new deal the following season and going into pre-season of that year, you know, what, what were the expectations of both yourself and the team? Um, I think, like any team that gets promoted, you just kind of want to stay in the league. That's the first thing. Um, I don't think anyone could kind of picture what was going to happen that season as well. But again, he signed some good players um, and we had a good squad um, generally. So it was just maybe he's adding little bits of quality here and there because the core of the group, you know, he, he was signing players in League Two, which were League One players or, you know, one or two championship players. So, um yeah, we, we we just wanted to stay in the league, but obviously we had a, another good campaign. Any uh, any great stories from 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 the time at Rotherham Ben that you can say on camera? <laughs> Probably none on camera, to be honest with you. Um, I think, like I said to everyone on you know the podcast that I do, there'll, there'll come a time where I will tell the stories because there's some <laughs> crackers, especially from the Steve Evans era. Um, yeah. Me, me and one of the lads have, you know, we've always said that we, we did kind of not keep a diary, but we documented some of the stuff that, that went on there. But yeah, it was honestly, it was entertaining every single day going in, whether it was him fighting with the groundsman or having a go <laughs> with, with the people that make lunch or just basically slaughtering one of the players. Um, it was a crazy time, but it was, it was entertaining as well. Well, how, how do you think, like, like, cause, you hear like you hear those sort of stories in like from an outside point of view. You probably look at it thinking, "How the hell did he get go and get like the, the side back to back promotions with the way like he acted?" Do you think it's because he kept his main players happy on on his side? We used to say every day, "How are we actually getting promoted twice here?" <laughs> and we've, we've got this this. Mad man as manager, do you know what I mean? Like we couldn't believe how successful we were being. Um, whilst you know some of the stuff was going on on the training ground day to day, like with the, with the manager, um, but it it kind of made the lads closer together, if you know what I mean. Um, it it wasn't kind of us versus him, but there was you know there was stuff going on which was. <laughs> controversial to say the least but yeah I mean I guess that's the way it worked that he had a good group of players who kind of stuck together and yeah we kind of just dug in and did it for ourselves really and then that was you know worked out well yeah you ended up just as Jake was alluded to you ended up achieving a second successive promotion that following campaign that I mean that in itself is is very very difficult to do to get one promotion let alone two I mean what was yeah, what what was the key to going going to going to achieve that? Um, I think, like I say, we had players in League Two which should never have really been in League Two, so they they should have easily been in League One. We had yeah. quite a few cases of that. Um, a lot of lads who played higher and dropped down, um, and then, like I say, he made again. He made some really good signings that year. Um, you know, loan lads, um, lads at the start of the season. Um, and then kind of, I don't know, it was just the way that we used to play. Like, it was four four two getting balls in the box. But just, like, Steve, the way the way he wants his teams to play is just to be horrible to play against, you know. Yeah. Chase everyone down, wrap them, get in their faces, kick them. And we just had a kind of good blend and it just seemed to work. Um, I think it was that season, it was Wolves and Brentford were the, you know, the two main teams in that league. And we always had good games with them. Um, but as time went on, we just kind of, we just thought, yeah, you know, this is, this could work if we just keep at it. Because obviously, Ben, it's it's fully well known to myself that um, Paul Rayner does a hell of a lot of the coaching at Jills. Um, how key was Paul to those two, two promotions? Yeah, I mean, he, he obviously does the coaching um, and he was kind of, kind of the link between the players and the manager obviously he was more on the manager's side but yeah uh, it was certainly Paul Warren who's obviously now Rotherham manager he he was a fitness coach at the time he definitely took a lot of a lot of stick off Steve at the time and he obviously stuck up for us as the players he was yeah he he, <laughs> he was fighting fires all over the place really so wow yeah it was it was probably 
Paul Warren, but obviously Reigns was there as well, kind of doing his bit, taking the taking the training. Um, and yeah, then obviously Steve did a lot of the the decisions and you know personnel who was going to play and stuff. Could could you always see that Paul Warren would would go on and be a successful manager while he was still a fitness coach? Did he? Could you see that in him? Yeah, I mean he he didn't believe it at the time, um, but. We always used to say because he was such a good people person, that was half the battle. Um, you know, he just knew how to talk to lads of all different, you know, people from different backgrounds, different, you know, where they come from and stuff. So we always knew because he was that personable with the lads and the lads respected him. And he was one of those blokes that, you you know, you, you'd want to give your all for really. So, but back then he, he had a, a job as fitness coach he didn't kind of need to risk it moving up the ladder as assistant or a manager um i think it was only when you know one of the rather managers left that he got asked to do it but yes yeah, certainly i could see it that he would he would definitely make a good manager because half of it is you know being a people's person and how you treat the lads and how you get on with them it's obviously then he's added the coaching side to it the tactical side so um but yeah definitely you could see the potential in him of course, we have to talk about the playoffs, Ben. Um, ended up winning winning at Wembley. Um, crazy, crazy game with one of the, the best, probably, goals that you've seen at, at Wembley for Alex Ravel. Um, and then, of course, the famous Evans run down the touchline as well. Um, yeah, sum up, that, sum up that, that, that whole campaign, the day at Wembley. Um, and then, obviously, you were also vote, voted in the PFA League One Team of the Year as well. Yeah, I mean, it, it was... Everyone says that, you know, when you play at Wembley, it's obviously the best the best stadium to go to. But like you say, the way it happened, 2 0 down at half time. There there'd been a lot of games in the season where similar thing had happened. We'd be a goal down or two goals down. We'd always manage to come back somehow and draw or win. So um but I remember I remember coming off at half time and there was two of the lads going into the dressing room uh from from Lake Norrie and laughing and joking, talking about the night that they had planned and where they were going out in London, uh, what time they'd be going out and stuff, as if to think like we we've got this in the bag, we've done it. Wow. Um, and then yeah, like I say, the second half when Ravel scores that goal, and then kind of from then the, the penalties, it was it was just one of the best days I've had in in football. Yeah, I mean, what the celebrations like after that? I bet they were great. Yeah, like I say. It's, it was just madness. Obviously, to win anyways is good, but to to do it on penalties um, is was unbelievable. And yeah, like I say, the, the celebrations went on for that night. I think mine lasted about a week. So yeah, it was uh, <laughs> it was pretty good. Yeah, and then also as James said, there you were voted in the PFA League One Team of the Year. You know what what was the key to your success that year, having such a great season for yourself? Uh, like I say, I think it was just the style of play. Um, you know, I knew that I was out on the left, four four two, just putting balls into the box. Um, and that was kind of the key to it, really. Obviously, we had Alex Ravel and Kieran Agard, Wes Thomas up top, um, who got their fair share of goals. But for me personally, it was just getting the ball and putting the ball in the box as, as much as I could, which obviously happened quite a lot and, and did well that season. And then a season in the championship followed afterwards. I mean, I bet, I bet your expectations for that season were very different that time around, weren't they? <laughs> yeah, um, that that was a case of staying in the league after that. Um, but again, we we kind of knew that we we could do it. The more time went on, we knew. Well, similar to what I said about the way Steve plays, that um, you know teams would turn up and try and pass the ball, and they just you know would be ugly and make it hard for them and stuff. So we managed to grind a few results out. Um, and yeah, like I think it was the second last game of the season. We we obviously managed to stay in the league. Yeah, halfway through that campaign, it was reported that a fee had been agreed with Millwall for you to move there. Um, but of course, it's, it was reported that you turned down the move. You know, just talk talk to us about that situation. Uh, it was a bit of a, a bit of a strange one, to be honest. Um, uh, I was out of contract that, at the end of that season, and there hadn't really been a great lot of talk about extending. Um, extending my contract. A few of the lads who had done well the last couple of years, a few of them had left. Um but they hadn't the club hadn't really done anything to kind of, you know, sit down and say, can we sort a deal out, whatever. Um so it got to January and um yeah, Steve had told me that they'd accepted a bill for, a bid from Millwall. Um 
who were below us in the table and obviously it was London so I would have mm. to move mm. so me and Steve had a, a bit of a conversation <laughs> I was kind of saying to him you, you do realise they're below us in the table and could get relegated um, he threatened to not play me again for the rest of the season as he's done many a time um, and yeah try to bully me into the deal but I, you know, I, I didn't want to leave, especially not then to a team, you know, below us in the table. I still thought we could definitely stay at Rotherham. And from my point of view, um, you know, I, I wasn't thinking anything different apart from keep them in the league and then try and sort out a new contract. Yeah, Ben, sum up the rest, sum up the rest of that campaign then in the Championship. Was it was it a bit of a difficult, difficult one knowing that you wasn't kind of really wanted, but on the other hand, you had to kind of keep keep your mind in it to, to stop right rather than getting relegated. Yeah, that, that was the, you know, especially from the where I'd started and the journey we'd been on, I thought, you know, I want to keep the club in the championship. I think that's, you know, that's where they belong to be. So, and we'd done obviously a lot of work to get there. So to <coughs> kind of toss it off after that wouldn't have been right. Um, yeah. And yeah, it was like I say, we had a, I think it was the second last game we managed to stay up, which was what everyone wanted.